Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings for Wednesday, uh, March the 1st. We have a nine-game Wednesday slate, so another decent-sized slate for today, guys. Uh, we're going to go game by game, give you a quick breakdown of this nine-game slate, what I do like taking a first look on Tuesday night uh, when I'm recording this video. But before we do get started with the breakdown, as always, um, if you guys do enjoy these DFS videos, and if they do help you out, please hit that like button down below. I always appreciate the likes. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel, and if you have never checked out Prize Picks before, Prize Picks is the sponsor of this video. Uh, you guys can sign up for Prize Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAH. If you look at the bottom of the screen, when you sign up with promo code NOAH, uh, Prize Picks, they will match your first deposit up to $100. So if you deposit $50, they'll double that and give you an additional $50 to play with. If you deposit $100, they'll double that, give you an additional $100 to play with. So um, you're basically going to get your first, you know, whatever you deposit doubled. Um, you'll have you know, double the money to play with and you can make some entries, look at their props and see if there's anything that stands out to you. Um, they do already have some props posted for Wednesday. You can see what their board looks like right now. Obviously, this is not the full board. Take a look at the board again sometime Wednesday afternoon. You'll see a ton of props from every uh, every game from just about every player, um, at least, you know, like the starters and stuff. And if there's anything that stands out to you, whether you think a, a projection's too high or too low, you just take more or less. It's as simple as that. Uh, you have to make at least two picks, but you can make up to six picks, and you can win up to 25x your money on prize picks. So give them a try, guys. Use that promo code NOAH when you sign up and get your uh, first deposit matched up to $100. Let's talk through Wednesday's slate. So we got a nine-game slate. Should be another fun one. Uh, we'll start off with the first game of the night, Phoenix and Charlotte. So uh, for Charlotte today, big news here is that they're going to be without LaMelo Ball. So, you know, LaMelo Ball thing is done for the season, which is just super unfortunate. Uh, and then I think P.J. Washington is doubtful once again, so he is not expected to play. So without LaMelo, I mean, we can expect really everyone to benefit here. And obviously, you know, DraftKings... I mean, they don't really, like, adjust pricing anymore. I mean, Dennis Smith Jr., they did price up a little bit, but, like, Terry Rozier at 7,200 is definitely too cheap here with LaMelo out. He's going to be, like, the number one option on offense. The usage is going to be great for Rozier. He's going to take a ton of shots. He's going to have the ball in his hands way more. Phoenix's defense, I think, is solid, but, you know, without Mikael Bridges, I think this is a matchup that Rozier can do fine in, so I'm definitely into Rozier today. I think it's 7,200. He looks like a really good play. Um, Kelly Oubre, I assume, probably comes off the bench, plays mid to high 20s minutes. At 6,500, I think he's priced correctly, but there's definitely going to be more usage available for him. I um, mean, if you want to go there, I wouldn't you know, argue against it. Gord Hayward, I think is going to be a big beneficiary uh, beneficiary, with, uh, beneficiary without LaMelo. He played 36 minutes last game, been getting big minutes lately. Production's been really good for Gordon Hayward lately, and now you take LaMelo off the floor, there's even more usage for Gordon Hayward to soak up. So I definitely am interested in Gordon Hayward at 6,400. I uh, don't think Mark Williams' role really changes much, but he's still in play uh, just because he is a fantasy point-per-minute player that's going to play probably 30 minutes. Um, I think it's 6,300. He feels priced about right today, but I think he's still playable. And then obviously Dennis Smith Jr. is probably going to be the guy that starts in place of LaMelo. Uh, he should play big minutes here, should be productive. He's always been a pretty productive permanent player, and I know in the games without LaMelo this season, he's been pretty productive in those games. So yeah, 5100 for Dennis Smith Jr. DraftKings did price him up a little bit, but I still think he looks good at this price tag. That's kind of what I'm looking to from Charlotte today. Don't see anything else on the Hornets worth targeting. And then on the other side with Phoenix, so for the Suns today, uh, Kevin Durant is expected to make his Suns debut. Um, he's going to be on a minutes limit. We don't really know yet what his minutes limit is going to be. He hasn't played in like over a month. He hasn't played in almost two months. So I think he's going to be on a pretty strict limit. He's not really going to be viable for DFS. But with Kevin Durant making his debut, that's going to take away from guys like Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Chris Paul. It's really hard to consider anyone on Phoenix a priority today. Um, the matchup against Charlotte is obviously really good. It's a really good spot for DeAndre Ayton. We've seen Charlotte get killed by bigs this season. I think this is a spot where Ayton should have a ton of success. But with KD back, or I guess not back, but with KD making his debut, you know, does that affect Ayton at all? I think Ayton might be the guy that, like, gets the least, like, you know, it gets the least taken away from him. Like, I think Aiton could still have a good game here. He could really dominate on the boards. Um, I think he'll be able to, you know, get plenty of, um, you know, they'll, they'll be able to feed him in the post and get plenty of, you know, mismatches against this Charlotte team. So I'm still fine with Aiden at 8,100, but I'm not super interested in Devin Booker, not super interested in Chris Paul. Nothing else on Phoenix looks that great. Really, the guy that I think stands out the most here is probably Aiden just because the matchup is so good against Charlotte. But That'll do it for that game. Let's move on to the next one, Chicago and Detroit. 
So for Detroit today, they're going to be really short-handed once again. Uh, Isaiah Stewart already ruled out for this game. Jalen Duran already ruled out. And I think Bojan Bogdanovic, okay, Bojan is probable. So Bojan is expected back for this game. But they won't have Stewart. They won't have Duran. Um, so they're going to be more short, short-handed in the front court than the back court. Yo, know, Bojan is 6,200. I think in this matchup, it's fine. Um, he's going to have really good usage. His usage has been really good this season. It's just, you know, minutes, it's going to depend on, like, if this game is competitive. It seems like right now, I mean, a lot of these teams, like these tanking teams, Detroit, OKC, these teams are, like, literally trying to lose. And we've seen the last two games, even in competitive games, Bojan's only played 29 minutes. So that is definitely concerning that, you know, Detroit is clearly trying to lose right now. Um, they want to get that number one pick. So... Bojan's definitely risky, but I think if this game is competitive, he probably does play like 30 minutes, and he's in play at 6,200. Jaden Ivey at 5,600 I think is okay too, but I'm not super interested in really the, the guards here. I think most of my interest from Detroit is in the, the with the forwards and the bigs. So with Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Duran out, that really benefits J uh, James Wiseman, really benefits Marvin Bagley. I'm assuming we'll see Wiseman uh, start again, and then Bagley will come off the bench. Last game, Wiseman started at center, played 27 minutes, had 32 DraftKings points. You know, he's always been a fairly good permanent producer. He's still somewhat cheap on DraftKings at 4,800. I think Wiseman looks like a pretty good value today. And then Marvin Bagley, I like quite a bit as well. Um, him and Wiseman didn't play a ton alongside each other last game, but I think we'll probably see them play alongside each other a little bit here. Um, maybe they start Bagley alongside Wiseman. They could do that. I don't think they will, but they could. Um, but regardless, I think Bagley at 4,900 is an okay value as well. I would probably prefer Wiseman just because I think as a starter, Wiseman's minutes are more secure. But Bagley should play 24, 25 minutes off the bench, and he's a good permanent producer. So he's another guy you could look to for value. Those are probably my two favorite plays on Detroit, the bigs, you know, Wiseman and uh, Bagley. That's probably it, though, for this Detroit team. Nothing else looks that great here. So let's talk about the other side of this game with Chicago and Man, it's a really good spot here for the Bulls. The Bulls are on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and you know they're going to be facing one of the worst defensive teams in the league. So probably going to want to target somebody on Chicago. I think my favorite play here is probably DeMar DeRozan, and I know that DeMar DeRozan has been terrible lately. He had a horrible game against Toronto on um, Tuesday night, played 35 minutes, and had just 18 drafting points. But that was a really, really tough matchup against a good Raptors defense against OG Ananobi, who's a really good defender. Now you get to face one of the worst defensive teams in the league and a team that really has no good defenders at all. So big bounce back spot here for DeMar DeRozan. I think it's 7,900. He is definitely my favorite play on Chicago today. But if you want to go to Levine or Vooch, I don't hate it. I just think given the savings, DeRozan's the guy that I prefer between those three. I'm not really into any other Chicago guys, though. Um, if I'm going to target anyone on this team, it's going to be you know kind of one of the big three. So let's move on to the next game, Cleveland and Boston. You know, this is one of your games, you know, your typical typical game that's like going to be a fun one to watch, but it's not going to be a game worth targeting for DFS. These are two really good defensive teams, two teams that play slow as well. Um, starting off on the Boston side, Boston is pretty much fully healthy. Um, they had some guys out last game, like they didn't have Jalen Brown, but he's back for today. Um, Marcus Smart is, you know, back and healthy again. So I don't really like much on Boston here. You know, Tatum and Jalen Brown are two guys that can always have big games any night. And when no nobody would be surprised if you know Tatum went out there and put up 60 drafting points or you know Jalen Brown put up 50 drafting points, but at their price tags in this spot, neither one of them looked like priorities today. Um, and I think the rest can you know that can be said for the rest of Boston. Um, you know Brogdon, Derek White, Marcus Smart, these guys don't look as appealing now that Jalen Brown is back. The bigs from Boston, I could maybe see like Robert Williams is a really good permanent producer. His permanent production this season has not been nearly as good as previous seasons, but. You would think in a matchup like this against a big Cleveland front court, they're going to want to play Robert Williams as much as he can be out there. So I think he's going to play like 30 minutes. If you force me to play anyone on the Celtics today, I think Robert Williams would be the first guy that I would look to. But I'm really not interested in many Celtics today. And on the other side with Cleveland, it's pretty much the same thing. Cleveland, you know, Garland and Mitchell, the guards, they're always playable, kind of similar to Tatum and Brown. But they're priced correctly for this matchup against Boston. Neither one stand out. Same could be said for Mobley and uh, Allen at their price tags. And nothing else on Cleveland. None of these other guys are even worth considering. So, yeah, fun game to watch. I'll definitely be tuning into this one, but I don't think for DFS I'm really going to be heavily invested here. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game, uh, Philly and Miami. And it's kind of another game, you know, another game that should be fun to watch, but it's going to be you know probably lower scoring, and it's not going to be a game we really want to go too heavy on for DFS purposes. Um, you know, Philly, uh, or we'll start off with Miami first. So Miami, they're still going to be without Kyle Lowry, but I think uh, Kevin Love and Max Truce are both probable. They're both expected to play. 
Um, yeah, they're both, or actually Max Struess is questionable, so we'll have to keep an eye on his status, but um, Kevin Love is probable. Kyle Lowry is still out, so you'll probably see more minutes for Gabe Vincent, more minutes for maybe Victor Oladipo. I know Oladipo's not been playing like a ton lately. Uh, last game he only played, you know, 19 minutes, but the price tags have kind of adjusted for that already, so we're not really getting a ton of value here. You know, Jimmy Butler had a big game last game against Philly. He put up 58 DraftKings points. He nearly had a triple-double. He played 32 minutes. It's it's weird to see Butler not playing, like, massive minutes. Like, even in competitive games lately, he's only been playing, like, 31, 32 minutes. He's not really playing, like, 37, 38 minutes, um, which I think does cap his ceiling a little bit. But we see Jimmy get up for these big games against big-time opponents. He obviously played really well last time they faced Philly. I don't mind going to Jimmy today at 9K. I think he's more of a contrarian option, but I think he is in play. Bam really struggled in this matchup against you know, Embiid. He played 32 minutes and had just 26 DraftKings points. The price tag on Bam did come down a little bit. He's okay, but I'm not considering him a priority today. I probably would rather play Butler between the two. And then Hero at 7,600, I'll pass on. Um, the rest of Miami, I don't see too much else I like here. Kevin Love's been starting lately, but you know, minutes last game got cut way down. He just... Not been great as a starter. Um, the production's not even been that great either. So, yeah, just really don't see much here. I think that's pretty much it for Miami. And then, and then on the Philly side, you know, Joel Embiid kind of struggled in this matchup, kind of expected. I mean, Miami's been one of the best defensive teams versus centers this season. It's a really, really tough spot for Embiid. He played 34 minutes, had just 45 drafting points. Um, you know, at 11-2, I wouldn't consider Embiid a top option today. There's other uh, other guys I'd rather spend up for. We have a nine, obviously with a nine-game slate, there's going to be other guys to go to. Um, I think last slate, uh, that day on Monday when these teams played, it was like a, it was a four-game slate. So obviously Embiid stood out more that day when there was less games. Now that there's more games and there's more guys to pay up for, wouldn't consider Embiid a top option here um, just because the spot is just not the best against Miami. And then, like, James Harden at 10,300, I'll pass on. I probably, if I was going to play one of the Philly guys, I'd rather go to Embiid. And I'm not considering anyone else on Philly. Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, these guys are on a non-game slate, just not going to do it for me. So let's move on to the next game. Not too much to like in that one. Uh, Brooklyn and New York. So start off on the uh, Knicks side. So looking at the Knicks here, Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, you know, pretty much say the same thing about these two guys, like, every single day. They're going to play really big minutes if it's a close game. They're priced correctly, though. Randall's 9500 which feels like kind of the, the right price tag for him. His production lately has been a little bit down. He's had back-to-back -back poor games, but we know at some point Julius Randle's going to bounce back and have a big game. The Nets' defense, you know, they haven't been like this elite defensive team, but I still think the, the matchup against Mikael Bridges against Dorian Finney-Smith is not the best. So if you want to go to Randall, it's fine, but he's just more of a GPP place. I think the same could be said for Jalen Brunson. R.J. Barrett at 5,800 is just not a guy that I'm super interested in. His his production lately kind of been all over the place. Minutes have also been a little bit down. Um, Josh Hart's been playing really well off the bench, and he's kind of been taking some minutes away from Barrett. So not super interested in Barrett. Hart is going to come off the bench, like I said, probably play 25, 30 minutes. He's playable at 5,200, but I have a feeling there's going to be better value on a nine-game slate. Really not too much stands out from the Knicks. Um, Mitchell Robinson you can maybe go to. He's been playing pretty good minutes. I think he might be my favorite play on the Knicks if I had to play anyone here. Uh, in the three games he's played since coming back from injury, 28 minutes, 28 minutes, and 32 minutes. And he's always been a you know, fantasy point-per-minute player. So if we're getting 30 minutes from Mitchell Robinson at 5K, yeah, he can easily outperform the salary. So that's probably my favorite play on the Knicks it is Mitchell Robinson. And then on the other side with Brooklyn, you know, Mikael Bridges, he's been great since getting traded to Brooklyn. Um, you know, had really good usage, been playing massive minutes. His permanent production's been way better with this Nets team. The price tag is 7,400, feels about right, but clearly Bridges has the upside to outperform the salary. 45 DK points uh, on Tuesday night against Milwaukee, 43 against Atlanta, had 71 against Miami. The ceiling is definitely there. The matchup against the Knicks, I think, is okay. So I'm fine with Bridges. He's more of a contrarian play, but I think he is in play here. Uh, don't love the spot for Nick Claxton, but Claxton did have a huge game on Tuesday night. Um, he got he racked up a lot of stocks. Um, he he did a lot better on like on Yahoo and on FanDuel because he had three blocks and three steals. I think he had like 40 fantasy points over there. He had 35 DK points, played 31 minutes. Minutes have kind of been trending up for Nick Claxton lately, and I think with Ben Simmons out, like they just really don't have many bigs that they are confident giving minutes to. Um, when, when Simmons was healthy, they could play like small and play Simmons at the five. They don't really have that option with Simmons out right now. So I think Claxton is going to get like 30 minutes and he's a good per minute player. 
He's fine at 6,400 if you want to go there. And then I want to talk about Cam Johnson for value. So Cam Johnson, man, been really, really good lately. 36 DK points on um, Tuesday night against Milwaukee. 30 or 39 DK points the game before that against Atlanta. Minutes have been really good for Cam Johnson lately. Production's been great. His price tag at 5,300 is still somewhat low. Um, I think Cam Johnson in tournaments makes some sense today. I don't think he's really going to get much ownership. So he's definitely someone you can look to as a kind of a value play. Um, we'll have to see if you know any other value opens up today. But that'll do it for Brooklyn. Nothing else really stands out on the Nets. So let's move on to the next game, the Lakers and the Thunder. So we'll start off on the OKC side. For OKC today, we're going to have to monitor the news here with SGA. Uh, we don't really have any update on SGA yet. Um, it looks like he entered health and safety protocols. I know he was injured. He was he was actually injured. Like I think he has he had an ankle and an abdomen injury, that is what kept him out um, Tuesday. And then he, it looks like he entered the health and safety protocols. So yeah, if he entered health and safety protocols Tuesday, that probably means he's going to be out today. So I would assume SGA is going to be out again. You know, OKC. If you look at their box score Tuesday night, they ran some weird rotations. They none of the starters besides Jalen Williams played much of the four, of the fourth quarter. Josh Giddy for the game only played what 19 minutes in a competitive game. Um, Lou Dort only played 21 minutes. Like these guys, I mean, Giddy did pick up some early fouls, but he really didn't lose many minutes for that. They were still playing him even despite the foul trouble. This is kind of what I said earlier with like Detroit literally like limiting their starters. I'm kind of worried that OKC is going to do the same thing. Like OKC clearly is trying to tank. Um, so, man, it's it's a tricky situation. The matchup against the Lakers, I think, is really good, and I think this game definitely has some high-scoring potential, some you know big-time upside if it stays competitive. But I'm a little bit worried about OKC just doing weird stuff and like playing Giddy 25 minutes just because they don't want to win. But if they do play Giddy full minutes, obviously without SGA, this is a really good spot. I think Giddy at 7,600 is definitely in play for tournaments. Jalen Williams, it seems like his minutes are going to be pretty secure. Um, he had a really big game. Played 33 minutes, had 49 drafting points. I think he's pretty solid at 6,200. Um, I think the matchup against the Lakers is definitely good. So, yeah, I'm definitely interested in Jalen Williams. And again, Lou Dort, minutes got cut down for him as well, which is obviously concerning. But he's been good in the games without SGA. His permanent production has been good. So I still think he's in play at 5,100. And then the value from OKC, Isaiah Joe, he did start once again in place of SGA. He should start once again here. Wasn't nearly as productive on Tuesday night, but I think at 4,500, if you want to take a shot on him, it's fine. It's just, man, like this this OKC team, after what they did Tuesday night with how they ran that ro their rotations, it's just really concerning that you know, they're going to spread out the minutes and you know they don't really care to win this game. But we'll see how they treat this one. Um, if you want to go to Giddy, Jalen Williams, Dort, I think those are the guys I probably would be targeting first from this OKC team. Now on the other side with the Lakers, uh, no LeBron for the Lakers, obviously, and then DeAndre Russell was doubtful for Tuesday's games. We don't we don't really have any update on Russell yet. Keep an eye on this. If Russell plays, I think he's kind of interesting because obviously without LeBron, there's a lot of usage available, and Russell is a guy that can soak up usage and can be productive when given opportunity. So I would have interest in Russell today if he's playing and not limited. If he's not playing again, then the biggest beneficiary is going to be Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder was pretty bad Tuesday night, played 32 minutes against Memphis, had just 29 drafting points, but He's super cheap again. He would have to take on a really big role here without LeBron and potentially without Russell as well. So I would be fine going back to Dennis Schroeder. I'd be fine going back to a lot of these Lakers values. Um, these guys are still really cheap. I know some of them busted. Vanderbilt kind of busted on Tuesday night, but he still played good minutes. He played 29 minutes, just wasn't very productive. Matchup against OKC, I think it's much better for Vanderbilt. OKC really struggles to rebound. So this is definitely a spot where Vanderbilt can really dominate on the glass. And that's where he's going to do a lot of his production. So yeah, I'm fine going back to Vanderbilt today. I'm fine going back to Malik Beasley. Again, I know these guys were not that great Tuesday night, but they're still really cheap. There's no LeBron. There's probably going to be no Russell either. These guys still look like pretty good values. And then, obviously, Anthony Davis is in a great spot here against OKC. It's a back-to-back, -back, so we'll have to monitor the injury report, but I assume Anthony Davis plays here. The Lakers need to win games right now if they want to have a shot at making the playoffs. And Hopefully, this is a game that they can easily win against a bad Thunder team that doesn't have SGA right now. So, expect uh, AD to play here. Expect him to have a massive role, play massive minutes, and OKC is going to have no answer for him. This is a spot where Anthony Davis should absolutely be able to dominate. So, I definitely like him at 10,200. I think he's a really strong play. Um, once again, there's going to be a lot to like from the Lakers today, um, especially if you know Russell doesn't play as well. But 
That'll do it for that game. I think we kind of talked about everything there. Um, I know Austin Reeves had a good game off the bench on Tuesday night. If you want to go to him in GPPs, I don't think it's bad. Like, I think he's definitely in play. He's only 3,800. He's worth taking a shot on for sure, especially if you're playing uh, a lot of lineups. But let's go ahead and move on to the next game. We still got three more games to go over. So next game, Orlando and Milwaukee. Milwaukee, they're on a back-to-back -back today, so we're definitely going to have to monitor their injury report. This is obviously a game against Orlando that they, they should easily be able to win. Um, Giannis has kind of been off the injury, or, you know, he's been on and off the injury report lately. He did play on Tuesday night, played 28 minutes in his return, had 59 drafting points. A little bit worried about Giannis sitting today. I think there's definitely a chance he does sit on a back-to-back, -back, but, you know, keep an eye on it. Obviously, if Giannis plays, he should crush here, but I'm definitely worried about blowout. I mean, this is a spot where Milwaukee should just crush Orlando. So it's hard to really get excited about many Milwaukee guys, especially if Giannis is in, just because everyone is priced correctly for Giannis to be in. If Giannis gets ruled out and he doesn't play on the back-to-back, -back, then obviously Drew benefits, Bobby Portis benefits, Lopez, Middleton, they benefit too. You know, these guys aren't like super, super cheap. I mean, Drew's 8,800, Portis is 7,300, Lopez is 6,600, Middleton is 6,500. It's tough to really say too much about Milwaukee right now. Um, you know, maybe like, I know Middleton's kind of been sitting, like I think he sat in their last back-to-back, -back, so like maybe Middleton sits today and... Like, if, if by some chance Middleton and Giannis both sit, then that would definitely change a lot. That would make Drew look really good. Portis would look really good. But for now, there's not too much to like on Milwaukee, assuming they're fully healthy here. This is just a spot where I think they're going to easily be able to cruise to victory. And at their price tags, I don't really see any of these Milwaukee guys being super appealing. Now, on the other side with Orlando, Orlando is a team I'm just probably going to avoid today. Um, it's a game that I think has a lot of blowout risks. It's a tough matchup as well. Don't really like Bancaro here. Don't really like Wendell Carter Jr. in this spot. Same goes for Markel Fultz. I mean, on a nine-game slate, uh, yeah, I'll probably just pass on these Orlando guys. And if somebody on Orlando goes off today, then so be it. But I have a feeling a lot of these guys are going to be, you know, unowned. So it, it might not even kill you if somebody does go off here just because nobody's probably playing anyone on this team. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game. Really not much to like in that one. Next game, uh, Memphis and Houston. So Memphis, they're another team on a back-to-back -back today. We'll have to monitor their injury report. We'll start off on the Houston side, though. So for Houston, uh, Kevin Porter Jr. was questionable for Tuesday's game, and he did not play. Jalen Green did wind up playing, though. Um, given Kevin or given that Kevin Porter Jr. sat out Tuesday night, I think that means he'll probably wind up playing today. But man, Houston, like they're another team that just, we don't really know what we're going to get from Houston. Are they even going to try and win this game? Shingun, once again, did not play like a ton of minutes. He played 29 minutes. It was another blowout. Um... I think Jalen Green's minutes were not, like, super high. Like, he only played 19 minutes. I mean, it's a really tough situation. Um, obviously, the matchup against Memphis is not the best either. So, I don't see too much to really like on Houston today. You know, if Kevin Porter Jr. is out again, then, like, maybe you could go to Shingu. Maybe you could go to Jalen Green. But these guys don't look like great options at their price tag. They're just kind of, like, GPP dart throws. Jabari Smith and KJ Martin both feel priced correctly, especially now that, you know, the guards are back. There's really no value worth targeting on Houston. It's just... Not a team I really want to be heavily invested in on a nine-game slate when we have other teams that are shorthanded that are trying to win, um, whereas Houston I don't think really is trying to win right now. And then on the other side with Memphis, it's a great spot here for Memphis. So I think Memphis is definitely a team we're going to want to look to. Ja Morant is just in an absolute smash spot. I think this is a spot where Ja should just go nuts. I mean, Houston is going to have no answer for him. We saw Ja have a huge game, triple-double against the Lakers on Tuesday night. I would not be surprised if he had another triple-double here. I mean, Houston... They've been killed by guards this season. Ja went nuts against them earlier this year. Put up 49 points, 4 rebounds, 8 assists, 73 DraftKings points last time he faced Houston. And I think he did that like kind of in a blowout too. Um, if I can find that game, let me see if I can find it in the game log. Uh, let's see. He played, yeah, he played 31 minutes. It was actually a competitive game, but yeah, 73 DK points. I mean, great spot here for Ja. 9,900 is definitely too cheap for this matchup, so I think he's right up there with Anthony Davis in terms of, like, best payup option on the slate. The rest of Memphis, Bain and Triple J, I don't mind, but I think they are priced correctly here, but again, the matchup is just so good. Like, it feels likely that somebody from Memphis is going to do well today, if not maybe multiple guys. Um, Xavier Tillman, he should continue to start in place of Steven Adams. I think at 4,600, he's an okay value here. He played 32 minutes on uh, Tuesday night, so his minutes have been pretty good lately. Um, we saw them start Brandon Clark for a few games, but now they're going back to Tillman, and it seems like Tillman is the guy they're going to give the minutes to. So, yeah, I'm fine with Xavier Tillman for value at 4,600 if you want to go there. Probably it, though, for Memphis. Nothing else looks that great here. Clark, Brooks, I'll pass on those guys. 
Um, yeah, it's just it's really Ja and I think John Tillman probably my two favorite plays from uh, from Memphis today. So let's move on to the last game of the night, the uh, only late night game on the slate, the Pelicans and the Blazers. So we'll start off on the Blazers side, uh, back to back for the Blazers here. Gonna have to monitor their injury report. Uh, Anthony Simon's been out for a while. I think he's gonna still be out for this game, and then I think Yusuf Nurkic is gonna still be out as well. Um, so man, like without Simon's and Nurkic right now, it's just kind of been the Damian Lillard show. Dame didn't have the greatest game Tuesday night against the Warriors, but his usage is just going to be absurd. He's going to take a ton of shots here. The price tag at 11-9, I don't think makes him a priority today. I think I would rather save salary, play John Morant, save salary, play Anthony Davis. But I don't have an issue going to Dame. We know the upside is there just with how much usage he's getting right now. Jeremy Grant, I think at 7,100, feels priced about right. But clearly, he's going to have a big role with all these guys out as well. The value from Portland, though, I've just really not been playing these value guys. The like Cam Reddish, Drew Eubanks, you know, the... Matisse Thibel, like I just haven't been playing these guys, and I know Reddish has had some good games lately, but he feels priced about right for what his upside really is. Same goes for Drew Eubanks, same goes for you know Matisse Thibel. Don't see too much I like on Portland besides really you know Damon and, and, and Grant. And then on the other side with the with the Pelicans, so obviously still no Zion for the Pelicans. Jonas Valanciunas is questionable for this game, so this will be really big news to keep an eye on. There would definitely be some value to go to from the Pelicans if Jonas Valanciunas sits. And then Josh Richardson, I believe, is uh, questionable as well. Um, yeah, he is questionable for this game. So don't know if there'd be as much value to go to with Richardson out, but definitely if J Val sits, whoever starts at center, whether it be Hernan Gomez, Larry Nance, Jackson Hayes, um, or Larry Nance is out right now. I totally forgot about that. So yeah, it either would be probably Hernan Gomez or Jackson Hayes. Probably would be Hernan Gomez, I think. But I know I think last game Hernan Gomez was a DMP. Um, yeah, he, I think he was a DMP last game. So maybe they would go to Jackson Hayes. Keep an eye on it, though. If Valanciunas does get ruled out, whoever starts at center, whether Turner, Gomez, or Hayes, would be a really, really good value. Probably one of the better value plays on the slate. Um, you know, Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum would also pick up some more usage, and they would look like better options. You know, I think where they're priced at right now, 8300 for Ingram, 7500 for McCollum. They're both playable options here. Obviously, it's a revenge game for, for McCollum going back to Portland. These guys were definitely playable, but I wouldn't consider them priorities today. Uh, they would look more appealing, though, if j -Val did get ruled out. But yeah, right now, I'm just kind of waiting on you know the status of j -Val. If j -Val plays, he's kind of interesting because without Larry Nance, the minutes are going to be really secure for j -Val. Now, last game, he only played 23 minutes, but I think more times than not, we would see 30-plus minutes from j -Val whenever you know, Nance is out. And we know j is a really good permanent producer. The matchup against Portland is really good, especially if there's no Nurkic, which I think Nurkic is going to be out again. So... Yeah, if J-Val plays, I like him quite a bit. And again, if he doesn't play, whoever starts in place of him would be a good value. And then for Josh Richardson, you know, if he doesn't play, probably means more minutes for Herb Jones, more minutes for Trey Murphy, more minutes for probably like a, you know, maybe Najee Marshall. Whoever starts there would be viable. Um, I assume it would probably be Trey Murphy. So like if Trey Murphy were to start in place of Richardson, he'd be in play at 4K. Um, but not like, you know, that wouldn't be like a priority value or anything. Not a guy that I'd really be slamming into my lineups. Whoever starts at center, though, for the Pelicans, um, if j -Val got ruled out, that would be a guy that I would definitely want to, to build around. But that'll do it for this game, I think. And that'll do it for this uh, nine-game Wednesday slate. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like button. If you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And again, go check out Prospect, guys. If you're not signed up for Prospects yet, use that promo code NOAH. When you sign up, get your first deposit matched up to $100. Check out Prize Picks. Look at all the props they have available for Wednesday slate. If you see anything that stands out to you, you just take more or less on a player's projection. It's as simple as that. You have to make at least two picks, but you can make up to six picks, and you can win up to 25x your money on Prize Picks. Make sure you sign up, guys. Use that code NOAH when you sign up, and get your uh, get your positive bonus when you do sign up. But good luck on the slate, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching these videos, supporting the content, supporting the channel. Appreciate you guys a ton. We'll see you in the next one.